Welcome, welcome, my lovely people, greetings. Look at all you lovely, gorgeous, beautiful people. Welcome, this is the Just, uh, Just Write Seminar, how to write your journal, and oh, you are in for a treat, you better get ready. My name's Winston Duncan, and I am your host. So for the next five minutes, we're just gonna welcome everybody into the meeting. They're clapping for NHS, if you wanna go and clap. Please do. So we've got 11 people on the call. Hi, Agnes. How you doing, my lovely? Is that the awesome book slayer, Pamela Hines? Yeah, she's in the building. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I made sure that she caught. I made, I made sure that she entered. <laughs> lovely to see you. Give blessings. Cody, hey, how are you? Your books arrived. Okay. Hi, Jo. Welcome, welcome. Hey, is that Miriam in the building? Hey, girl. Can you hear them clapping? Woo, NHS. No, seriously, they're saving lives. We give thanks. We give thanks. So go and grab a cup of tea, get a biscuit. I've got my tea. I've got my water. Last week I had green juice. I haven't got that this week. Make sure you are equipped because for the next 90 minutes it is going to be fully, fully lit and fully loaded. So we're just giving people a chance to come in. Just welcoming everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Where have you been all my life? It is so nice to see you. Wow. We give God the glory. So how's everyone doing? Let me see. I'm going to unmute your mics. Let's have a little chat. Here we go. Right. How are you doing, my lovelies? Are you expectant? Oh, Joe, you caught the sun. Hi, Hannah. Hi, I've got my book. Hand. Who's got their book? What? <laughs> Come on, let's kiss. Let the books kiss. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> It's really, really good. Like, I really, really like it. And thank you for signing it as well. Thank you very much. You are most more than welcome. No problem. Oh, we've got four people waiting. Gosh, gosh, it's exciting. Yay! So officially, we had 30 people booked in on the call. We had quite a good time. Hi, Nelsa. Who have we got? Hi, Jaten. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Hi Jamelia. Oh, Nelsa's the hot girl today. Can you do us a 12, please? Hot girl. All right, another two minutes and then we're going to get started. You guys two are very, in very effect. good looking. Big up, big up. Amanda, hello, welcome. I did, I've just added them in. But let's crack on. So your network is your net worth. So if you look around, the people in this room, your network is your net worth. Now, um, we've got an affirmation here called I am author and author am I. So we're going to do that and then I'm going to open it up to the rest of the group um, uh, to say it with me. And this is, this is one of the things that we teach to be, you know, positive. So I am an orphan, orphan my. So let me unmute everybody. Okay, so just please unmute yourself. So it's just a call and response. You just copy what you hear me say. Here we go. <clears throat> I am an orphan. I am, I am an author. Oh, you've got to give me more gusto than that, guys. Come on, wakey, wakey, rise and shine. I am an author. I am an author. An author am I. An author am I. I will tell her. I will tell her. I will tell him. I will tell him. I will tell them. I will tell them. I am. I am. An author. An author. An author. An author. An author. Am I? Am I? All right, give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah. And I realised that one of the things that's really important as a proofreader is to tune into the voice of the person who's written the book. Um, now, I've, I've proofread books at, at many different levels. Um, there are people that are, you know, fantastic writers, if you like. They're, 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 they have na natural kind of gift for it. 
and they're just kind of expressing that to other people who've got something to say but aren't necessarily writers per se and that's fine so I'll just work you know I'll work with whoever um but I guess uh, with the with the um second category of people it would be easy for me when I'm correcting when I'm when I'm correcting grammar and spelling to also take away from the person's voice uh, okay and and so one of the things that I do is I spend time with the author before I even touch their work so um spending time is a phone call but it enables me to tune into people's voice um ask some key questions about about their work um, and to make sure, and I, and I record that, to make sure that I've, I, I always use that as my reality checker is, so if I feel that I'm veering into my voice, I go back to that and say, okay, what is it that they were trying to do? What is it they were trying to say? And that Mother and birthing. So I'm assuming that this is a journal, right? Whose topic was this? Phone. <clears throat> oh, okay. Can you unmute your mic, please, Joan? Oh no. Okay. Lovely to see you. It's been a long time. You well? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Good. I'm glad you're going to be on the masterclass. Right. Thank so, you. mother and birthing. Let's get specific. Mother and birthing journal. Okay. Cool. Right. So. What we can see here in the top left is that 177 people are looking for this book. So Joan, you've got a really niched book, okay? Um, it means that whenever people type this in, you will, um, you, your target audience is very small, so you will get people buying your book. All right, so we go to the first one here and we're going to look inside it. So what you've got to think about in terms of layout for your book is what are other people's books looking like? So that's really what we're going to do. We're going to look inside. I like the cover, How to Grow a Baby and Push It Out. <laughs> it's very simplistic. It tells you what it does on the tin. Um, it's good on my eyes. I liked the reading of it. It feels very friendly. It looks like it's a colour book, How to Grow a Baby and Push It Out. Yeah, okay. Colour books are more expensive. Good. I like the layout and the formatting so far. So let's see what she's done in the interior. So this is interesting. Colour books are definitely more expensive. So what she's got here is a graphic designer to help her to create the imaging so there's so much you can do on InDesign and then you'll need a graphic designer that does say uh, um, books with more stylized and they've done quite well I like the layout it's readable it's legible I don't like this it's a line to the left I think it should be justified but that's just my preference it looks a bit jiggy jaggy to be honest I'm not really into that um i like this kind of squiggly writing here to tell or not to tell it looks very childlike i like that it's personable it's got some images but this book right here just to let you know if you look at this blue border around here this means that the print goes right to the edge of the page. Invited me to speak, uh, being my publisher, Peaches Publica Publications. Um, now, in terms of my book, The Rise of Rastafari, um, I'm going to focus mainly on a relationship I have with you, Winsome, and how we work together on the book. Because if I talk about the book subject, I'll just keep going on and on. And that's for guys, if you go on my YouTube channel later, you can see my lectures and radio talks I've done. Um, but generally, the book is gives a, a broad insight into the history of the Rastafarian movement and it dispels some of the misconceptions and misrepresentations um, that people have of Rastafari. Right? And to me, it was very important to, um, to get the knowledge, to get the information out, because I think Rastafari is something that a lot of people have heard of. But a lot of people don't actually understand that like, the full historical um, the, the history and the origins of it. Um, so it's very important to to get um, to get the knowledge out. And um, Winsome, I take my my hats off to you because um, one of the things that I um, enjoyed working with you on the book was 
um, and that you helped helped me afterwards was marketing my book and my reach and getting it out to more people because this was something um, my book had the rise of Rastafari. This was something that I was passionate about, and anyone who knows me, um, I'm a very knows me. I'm a very Pan African individual. I'm, I do a lot of work in the community and I'm involved in activism, and I'm also a journalist as well. Um, so, in terms of the book, The Rise of Rastafari, initially I was just going to have it um, to people within my network, people in the in the community. Um, but then Winston got me to think a lot bigger and to to, to expand my market, and then. We decided to put it on um, Amazon, so it went on paperback, it went on Kindle, and something that that stuck with me um, is she told me to be the brand of my product. And over the last year, my book launch was on May the 18th, which is a year a year ago. Um, that's something that I've done. I've been right. So Andrew, can you say something, Mr. Beckford? Right. Um, let me first of all say thank you very much. For giving me this platform yeah um i want to say You're quickly welcome. um about myself um yes i met um winsome th through another author actually an author who actually um was published by winsome um peaches publication and that was anthony cookson and i have never regretted it at all in fact it has been one of the best things that has happened to me um she has helped me with networking she has helped me with marketing and as she has said before um bbc um sky and also of course um getting to um events so it has been just amazing i have been really really um supported i've been supported by her in every way you can imagine the one thing i want to say to everyone is that once you are with winsome um she she will always look after you. She will. She she really um looks after you very well. So that's something to note. Now um, the one thing I also wanted to point out when I look at this is that um writing is not particularly easy for everyone. However, um with Winsome she makes it easy. And as her her latest book, as you can see, it helps you to actually write very well and write as quickly as possible so um there are lots of positives that i could say and i tell you what if i should if i should speak too long here then i'd lose my time on that topic but what i wanted to talk to you about is my books as well because i've had a, a few books the missing fathers yeah a boy's cry was the first one that i wrote then we had the missing fathers and the one that i am loving more than anything else is the the girl who shone like a star. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. When I wrote um, uh, A Boy's Cry, it was really because of some of... I wanted it out. I was so keen to get it out there. And now people are contacting me and saying, there's loads of typos, there's mistakes. That bit didn't make sense. Or, you know, another thing that's quite common is that people go between different tone. So, you know, and it's easy to do when you're writing yourself. So you say, oh, if you're doing this, and if we're doing that, um, uh, rather than staying with one tone of voice, okay? So if you're speaking to someone, that's what you're doing. If you're speaking um, with someone, that's you're, you're doing something else. People um, get tense mixed up as well. So if you're talking about something that's happened in the past, or if you're integrating anything, like say if you've, particularly with journal writing, if, you've, um, if you're using stuff from your own journal to illustrate points, that will be in the past tense and you need to make it clear that you've gone between different tenses because as a reader it's confusing if somebody's jumping around like if i were if i were talking now and i was going from different tense that would be confusing so those are the things that i pick up on and i guess i've realized through through working with winston that i probably and I think, i'm sure winston would agree i probably do more than than what a proofreader would do but for me, there's something about um, doing the job properly and again, being respectful of people. So I'm, it's, I'm not the type of person that's going to say, right, okay, I've said I'll do a straight proofread. So I've noticed this thing and I'm not going to say anything. I would always say something. I would always share with the author. I've noticed this. Are you sure you want to write that? Um, it's even things like um, facts, facts and figures. So I had someone who'd, who'd written a book one time and, and there were some dates of events in there. And when I looked, I thought, well, I'm sure that doesn't make sense. 
so I've picked up on, on that. That didn't make, I'm sure that didn't happen then. Are you sure you want to say that? Or sometimes people can be controversial in a way that really they're just saying, no, that's what I want to say because that's my voice, but actually not stepping into the, into the role of the reader and how that sometimes jumps off the page to the reader. So one of the things that I try to do is to kind of give feedback that says, okay, I get what you're trying to say, but it sounded a bit harsh. Did you mean it like that? Um, and sometimes people say, yeah, I did, and, I, and that's fine. It's not an issue. But more often than not, people will go, do you know what, Joe? I didn't even think about it like that. Um, actually, what I meant to say was this, or I really don't want it to come over like that. So I try to give like a, a critical, critical friendship, I guess you'd call it, critical voice as well. But again, in a not not in a critical way, in a in a in a way that's, that's enabling.